So let me go ahead and get started for this workshop, Establishing a Risk Management Framework for Clinical Trial Conduct and Oversight. I am Liz Wolf. I'm your trainer today. My acronyms is the first one represents that I am a certified CRA through the Association of Clinical Research Professionals. The second acronym is I am a certified instructional designer, and I am also a certified master trainer. And the goal of today's webinar is going to address a risk management framework. What do I have to have in place to do risk management? What are the timelines, resources, protocol, and quality requirements that build into this? We need a foundation. We need a framework. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to you know, fill in those gaps. We're not going to have time to really get to the next step on how to address how. But at the end of the, the session, I am going to share with you some nice steps a roadmap, so to speak, on how to do effective Im implementation of the framework. And also, we want to recognize that risk is something that's come into the good clinical practices world, the good clinical conduct practices of our trials in the last few years. But what I'm going to present to you is a framework. Some of this might be new terminology. But you will find that you've actually been doing risk management probably for quite a while. It's just bringing what you do into a new set of um, nomenclature, language, methods, processes. And I'm going to walk you through that because every day we manage risk. And a great example of that is I'm standing at the corner and I'm going to walk across the street in the middle of traffic. Well, am I going to wait for the walk button to tell me that I can walk across or maybe that intersection? does not have a walk button, and I manage the risk of not getting hit by that oncoming car by seeing how fast they're going, how far away they are from us. So therefore, we manage risk all the time. And I do believe that in clinical trials, and I've been in the industry a long time, we've been managing risk for years. It's just now we're getting a more systematic approach. Excellent. Our agenda for today is to review our learning objectives. I want to review with you the regulator expectations of sponsors and CROs in the conduct of clinical trials, as well as sites. I'm going to do some level setting on terms for quality by design and risk management and walk us through that. Provide you with definition for risk, because this is very important, is for your organization to land on and determine what your definition is for a uniform approach. The next is the review of risk management principles and guidelines, the risk management framework review, and what is needed to operationalize risk management. Our learning objectives are to explain the rationale for knowing an organization's definition for risk, describe the guiding principles when implementing a risk management framework, and describe the attributes of a risk management framework. Quality by design and risk management. When we are being inspected in today's landscape, either by the US regulators or our European Union regulators and other regulators, they ask us this question now. How did you manage your trial for quality and demonstrate providing effective trial oversight? So being within regulatory affairs, you also have a very critical role is because of your activities with the regulators, your responsibilities from a regulatory um, communication and reporting structure, as well as all the different jo job activities that are in regulatory affairs. It's a supporting structure that is critical to the success of our marketing applications as well as to the design of our trials. Quality by design on a protocol level, what I would like to do right now is to walk you through this just for a moment since this is a new topic for you. And it's known by quality by design. And what it is all about is it's a very critical piece of risk management is to understand the framework is in the beginning of risk management and assessments, you're looking at assessing the key risks, the impact, the plan you're going to implement to mitigate, alleviate those risks, and then how you're going to evaluate whether your approach worked. The next part is operationalizing it is bringing it into, OK, we made assessments of our risks. Because I'm going to go through this in more detail for you and break that down even more. So bear with me. It's just a process step here. Operations do. What am I going to do 
this relates to my organization. What are my procedures and processes that I'm going to put into place that are very specific to the risks with the protocol or the risks to the activity or the work or the, deli or the work product for the project, for the protocol? The next piece is here. How am I going to check that what I said I'm going to do right here actually is working? Or do I need to reevaluate it and say, wow, I need to make some improvements because I have some new information available to me that I need to now go in and assess. Do I have to modify how we're doing the work? Or are we seeing some new risks in our evaluation that we didn't see before? And I'm going to walk you through that in a little while. 